Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe They help to make the seasons bright Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow Find it hard to sleep tonight They know that Sam is on his way He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh And every mother's child is gonna spy To see if reindeer really know how to fly And so I'm offering this simple phrase To kids from one to ninety-two Although it's been said Many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. time hour. I'm glad you could come by and share an hour with my TV family here and a couple of friends like Checky Green, George Goble, and Ann Murray. It really makes me feel great. Oh, oh, and something else. My mom and dad are with us and three of my sisters and, of course, my wife, Billy, and the kids. That sounds like Billy and the kid, don't it? We're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of good music, so why don't we just rip it off? Television City in Hollywood, starring Shecky Green, Ann Murray, Mel Tillich, Jerry Reed, Larry McNeil, plus Glenn's family, and special guest star George Goble on the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. to my humble store, buy a card, or three or four. Whatever you choose will be a smash. No checks allowed. We just take cash. I want a card for Christmas time. Something cheap with a simple rhyme. <laughs> you're making mock, and pal, I know it. But I got news for you, you're a terrible poet. Well, when it comes to thinking up a verse, I ain't very good, but you know, you're worse. <laughs> you're making sport, but that's okay. I'll give you any card you say. Now, here. You know, these cards are specialized. They're not for the masses. Oh. But to read this one, I've got to get my glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, here's a card... <laughs> Here's a card. It's the perfect pop-up. And if you don't like this, I'll close my shop up. Well, see, when you open it up, it's a pop-out scene with a pop-out king and pop-out queen. There's pop-out presents around a pop-out tree and pop-out singers who sing on key. Now, take my advice. It's really nice. Oh, and on the back is the pop-out price. Well, before I scream and before I holler, what's the price? Just $25. <laughs> You must be crazy. You're out of your mind. I just want the simple, inexpensive kind. 
You know, when you walked in, I saw at first sight, you're not only cheap, you just ain't too bright. <laughs> well, if you think you're smart and you think you're funny, you come up with a card and I'll come up with the money. <laughs> now, this may come as a big surprise, but nowadays, cards are personalized mm -hmm. for any pr profession or any position. Now, here's one for your family physician. What's the use of decking the halls if you won't come around to make house calls? That's kind of cute. Got one for a sailor? Not only that, you bet your bippy and one for your tailor. The suit you made was a lovely token. It fits like a glove, but the zipper's broken. Oh. Now, here's one that I got from my mother-in-law. Oh. T'was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, everyone was working except you, you louse. Now, those aren't clever, and those aren't fun. I want a card that I can send anyone. A traditional card that's cheerful and jolly, with Christmas trees, Santa Claus, candles, and holly. That's perfect, terrific, right on the dot. Now, ain't that a shame that's just what we ain't got? <laughs> Well, you've tested my patience, and I'm losing my coup. I'll try elsewhere. Goodbye and good yule. Oh, wait. I just remembered I've got it this time. It says, Merry Christmas. Now, would you spring for a dime? <laughs> now, that's a card that sounds real cheap. Read it out loud to me, you creep. I want you to listen to each word and each letter. Shakespeare couldn't have written it better. Hmm. May the season bring you good cheer. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. I'll take it. Signed, Irving. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, first of all, you got no bells. Santa Claus is never going to visit you unless he gets some bells. You got to sing with bells. Come on in, girls. Give him a hand. Oh. Ed, here's a bell for you. Come on. Oh, thank now you. Let's, let's see it. Let's do it again, okay? Okay. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What's wrong week, now? Week, 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 two week. Week. Yep, you got too much ding, not enough dog. It's just a teeny tinkle. What you need, my friend, is more bells. More bells? More bells, more bells. Can I continue now? Be my guest. All right. A one and a two and a three and a four. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what time it is to ride in one more to say. Hey, more bells. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. More bells. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. More bells. Your jingle doesn't jangle, your dingle doesn't dangle. What you need is more bells. Well, what other kind of bells are there? Cowbells. 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 And this, my friend, is Lula Bell. She's a bit of a ding dong, but she rings my chime. <laughs> well, one, two, three, four. Thank you. 
Mary's been with us three times. She's getting to be so much a part of the family around here, I wanted to make sure she was on our Christmas show. And here she is, a fantastic singer, Miss Ann Murray. Everybody wants to do it a different way. Well, that can lead to problems. And here's Shecky and Larry McNeely to show you how.
Christmas turkey. So, George, how do you do that? Hey, that's a beautiful bird. Well, Glenn, maybe to you it's a bird, but to me it's a dear, dear friend. What? Yeah, I mean, this ain't your average run-of-the-mill, commonary supermarket butterbell. You are looking at my best friend. Your, your best friend? That's right. I raised this turkey from an egg. You, you mean you raised him from the time it was hatched? No, before that, I sat on the egg. <laughs> How'd you do that? Very careful. I mean, you got to sit there three weeks, and you know, you just go this way one little bit, you know, or even if you go that way one little bit, yeah. you ain't gonna get no turkey. You're gonna have an omelet. <laughs> I mean, George, you're telling me you sat on a turkey egg for three weeks. Glenn, I didn't come all the way down here to tell you a lot of big lies. If I say, you know, 24 hours a day for three weeks, there I sat with my little bag all packed, ready for the big moment. <laughs> What'd you do all that time? Well, I knitted little three-toed booties. <laughs> I read Lady in Waiting magazine. <laughs> well, what did Alice say? Oh, Alice. Alice said, I never looked lovelier than I was when I was expecting little Buford. Oh, that's his name, uh, Buford? Buford, that's his name. And, and sure enough, one morning, about three o'clock, about three o'clock, I felt this little pecking sensation. <laughs> and little Buford, he was coming out of his shell. And, and I tell you, I just about came out of my jammies. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, labor pains, forget it. They're nothing compared to that, you know. So you can see that old Buford and I have been through a lot. Now, come, come on, George. You mean to tell me you had this turkey running around the house just like part of the family? Yeah, and messy. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, really, if there had been a newspaper strike at that time, it would have been all over. <laughs> but he was a beauty. He really was. He, it got so where I couldn't go anyplace without old Buford. Oh, really? And every night he used to sleep at the foot of our bed. Mm. It was real cute. And then one night he crawled right up in between me and spooky old Alice. I bet that made you mad, huh? No, no. The way I look at it, uh, ain't too much difference between a cold turkey and a cold shoulder. <laughs> uh, you know, it, really, it was kind of cute when he was sleeping with us, when he was little. Yeah. When he was little. But by the time he got to be this size, you know, he got to hogging the, the covers and... and uh, well, something had to be done, you know. Yeah. Agree. So I said to Alice, I knew something had to be I said, Alice, what do you want me to do with my turkey? And she told me. And, uh, so here we are, stuffing it. See, <laughs> I hate to think that we're making a 
meal out of your best friend. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all right. He looks real natural laid out like that, don't he? I don't know. You take their feathers off and they all look alike to me. <laughs> now, you see, you just can't help yourself, you know. Now, now there you go making mock at old Buford. Just because he happens to be stark naked. But I want to tell you something. There was a time when he was a snappy dresser. He was, that was before the accident. What accident, George? Well, actually, I don't believe it was really an accident. See, one day, spooky old Alice got after him with the vacuum cleaner. You know what it did? Sucked off his tail feathers just like that. Oh, I'm telling you, his pride was hurt so bad. It was sad, Glenn. It, I had to make him a whole new tail. Well, how'd you do that? Well, I took a bunch of old neckties, and I starched them up real good, and then I stuck them onto Buford's posterior. <laughs> And it was colorful, I'll say. And you talk about proud. Oh, that Buford, he was proud. You know what he used to do, Glenn? You what? won't believe this. He used to go strutting around like this, you know, with a necktie sticking out there. You know. Oh, he'd strut. He'd try to get the thing. And, 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 and he, if, if I wasn't there to watch him, he'd holler for me. He'd say, go, 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 go. <laughs> Strutting around there, you know. You know what the neighbors used to call him? No, what, George? Well, <laughs> the neighbors used to call him the proud bird with the goble tail. <laughs> you got, you got to show me how to dress your bird or not, George. Well, there's only one thing you really have to know. What's you that? see, I got this bottle right here. Now, the, the main thing, you just add a dash of Napoleon brandy. But why Napoleon brandy? Why Napoleon? Well, Napoleon, old nappy, he was Buford's idol. Because oh? he knew how to hold his brandy. How he used to hold it? He used to hold it right here under his coat. You've seen him. Pick <laughs> Kept his tummy warm. Oh? Now, you got to have just the right touch. Oh? A drop for thee and a drop for me. <laughs> Well, George, uh, can we get on with uh, getting the turkey ready? <laughs> Partner, that's as far as I go. Oh? Yeah, because by the time I finish the brandy, I start to get warm all over. Oh? And, and when I get that feeling like that, you know, I just get a real craving for Chinese food. Well, what about Buford? Let him get his own Chinese food. <laughs> Spot, and I guess the idea really came to me from the days we used to sit around the house and just pick and sing our little hearts out. Well, tonight it's kind of like old times because my mom and dad are here and uh, my three sisters, and they're going to join us in a little bit of down home music, and they're really something else singing together. Dad, y'all want to start it? Yeah. What you going to do? Crying time. Crying time? All righty. <laughs> Yeah. 
Ain't they beautiful? You know, they've been harmonizing something like now in 44 years now. Well, it is 44 years. Y'all been married 44 years yeah, now. Y'all didn't do any harmonizing before you was married? A uh, little now and then. <laughs> <laughs> 44 years. I'll never forget, my dad said he took mom out on his uh, 43rd wedding anniversary, and he went out, you know, to the ice cream parlor there in D-Light. That's a big outing there, you know. <laughs> and uh, they get back home that night, and uh, soon as dad head hits a pillow, he's asleep. I mean, he's, he's out. And uh, mama said, Wes, don't you remember 43 years ago tonight? said, you put your arm around me. And dad said, oh, all right. And he put his arm around her. He said, he's back out again. And Wes, Mama nudges him said, Wes, said, don't you remember 43 years ago tonight, you kissed me on the cheek? So Daddy said, oh, all right. He kissed her on the cheek, and he put his arm around her. Again, he fell asleep. Mom nudged him said, Wes, darn it, said, don't you remember 43 years ago tonight, you bit me on the ear? So Dad gets up, and Mama said, Wes, said, what are you stumbling around in the dark for? And he said, I'm looking for my teeth. <laughs> back home in D-Light. Mom and Dad, of course, and all my brothers, Wayne, Lyndall, Gerald, Shorty, and Ronald, and myself, and Sister Billy that's not with us tonight. And uh, my other three sisters is younger than I am. There's uh, Jane, and then Barbara, and then Sandy. Sandy's the baby, right? Yes. Hey, y'all do that song for me, okay? Okay. Till There Was You. Okay. Hit it, Marty. <laughs> This was a rock and roll number. I mean, we did it big around the house. Ready?
The bag is stuck. I got the bag. Oh, then it must be my stomach. <laughs> All these Christmas presents. Hey, noodles, this could be some haul, huh? Yeah. I don't I don't like it though, Toots. It's not a good idea to go around stealing on Christmas. Are you crazy? Everyone's asleep. You couldn't ask for a better time. The gifts are all out and the cops ain't. Yeah, but it's Christmas, Toots. Yeah, well, well isn't Christmas the, the, the time for giving and taking? Well, they're giving and we're taking. What are you worried about? You call this a haul. Two bottles of perfume, electric toothbrush, and a Barbie doll. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I already got a Barbie doll. <laughs> This is no time for levity. Hey, listen. You grab the television set and I'll get the silverware, okay? <laughs> okay. okay. Hey, notice. Huh. You'd never believe it, but it's genuine silver. Would you believe that? You're kidding. Hey, who are you? Well, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> you don't look like Santa Claus. Oh, oh, you, you mean because the way I dressed, huh? You, you didn't recognize me because I don't have the red suit and the, and the beard on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I only dress that way when I'm in department stores. But when I'm out casing a joint, I mean, uh, I mean, when I'm out delivering presents, I gotta be more comfortable. You, you know how it is, kid. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Noodles. I'm, <laughs> I'm Santa's elf. Yeah, he's, elf. he's my elf. How come you're so big? Well, uh, well, I'm, I'm a very young elf. You see, as elves get older, they get shorter and smaller. <laughs> see, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Santa's accomplice. Yeah, that's right. He drives the getaway. I mean, he drives the uh, sled. Uh, sled, 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 sled. Boy, wait till I tell the other kids that I'm at Santa Claus and his elf. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Won't they be surprised? Well, good night, little boy. Go to bed. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. You want to run upstairs? Wait, Santa. I'm not going to bed till I find out what you brought me. Well, it's way past your bedtime. Yeah, kid, do us a favor, will you please? Go hit the sack. My daddy says it's Christmas, and I can stay up as late as I want. Should I go ask him? No, no, ho, ho, no, 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 we can use another assistant, can't we, Noodles? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, what'd you bring me? Well, you're a good little boy. Yes? Well, uh, you know what I got for you? I, I got silverware. A service for 12, that's what I got for you. What am I going to do with that? What are you kidding, kid? You can hock that. You can get 50 bucks for that stuff. <laughs> look, look what else Santa brought you, a 17-jewel wristwatch. <laughs> yeah. But... I can't even tell time. Oh, it's easy, kid. You see, when the sparrow was on the... Uh, the oh. <laughs> there you go under the tree. There's a baseball glove, a chemistry set, and a sled. Oh, wow. Gee, you got me everything on my list. Yeah, now go to bed and Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, go to bed. And, and to everybody else, a, a, a merry good night, okay? Before I go, Santa, I want to give you a present. It's in my socks. His socks? What's the kid going to give us, his feet? <laughs> Here's a peanut butter sandwich for the long ride home. You can split it with noodles. And Santa, read the card. I wrote it myself. Hey, noodles, he's a nice little kid, ain't he? Yeah. Dear Santa, I like Christmas because everybody becomes good, even bad people. Not just because they're going to get presents, but because there's something about Christmas that, that's special. It makes all people want to be good. <laughs> Your friend Eddie. <laughs> you were wonderful. Wonderful Eddie. On behalf of Santa Claus and all his elves, thank you and Merry Christmas. You gonna give out some more presents, Santa? No, Eddie. What do you mean? I'm gonna give some back. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Santa. Merry Christmas, Noodles. Merry Christmas, Eddie. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody! I watch off for New Year's Eve. <laughs> this is my daughter, Kelly, and my son, Travis. And since you saw him last year, well, they've been working on some Christmas songs, and I think we just about got one learned, haven't we? Y'all yeah. ready? Okay, one, two, three. Deck the halls with bells of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don't we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient new tide cow, fa la 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 la. See. 
And this here is little Wesley Kane. You didn't see too much of him on last year's show because uh, he fell asleep, but he's got a little more life to him this year, don't you? Well, you, well I guess so, honey. Here's a song that kind of <laughs> describes how we feel about Christmas at our house. Give me a kiss. Kiss. <laughs> Christmas is for children, just for children, grown up say, Santa's down the chimney, that's for children. Dexter Dancer, Jerry and Mel, Larry, Bill, Dennis and Bob, and of course, Ann Murray. And our guest, Shecky and George. And over there at the piano is our musical conductor, Marty Page. And if we can keep up with him, we're going to do a few Christmas carols. Ding, dong, ding. Christmas is coming, the 
beasts are getting fat. Please put a penny in an old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a halfpenny will do. If you haven't got a halfpenny, may God bless you. Christmas is coming, the geese are getting fat. Christmas is coming, the geese are getting fat. The geese are getting fat. Travis, I think it's time you went to bed, so you want to say your prayers to Daddy? Okay. Okay. Now lay me down, see if I play little Lord, my soul to keep. Watch it guide me out of this state, too. I'll always say Hail Mary, 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 Hail
you. Good night and Merry Christmas. I hope you have a Happy New Year, too. Good night. For the Glen Campbell Good Time Hour, this is Bill Thompson. Time, winter time, Christmas time. The time of sugar plums, Santa Claus, and at last those lovable children from Peanuts. Enjoy a Charlie Brown Christmas. Meet Charlie Brown, Schroeder and Beethoven, Lucy, and that impudent hound, Snoopy. Here comes Charlie Brown now. Listen. Thanks for the Christmas card you sent me, Violet. I didn't send you a Christmas card, Charlie Brown. Don't you know sarcasm when you hear it? Be here as your favorite comic strip comes to life. This year, enjoy a Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> 